Hello everyone, how's it going? Well, today I've been doing some thinking and sometimes I get into discussions with people about why it is that I have so many pairs of boots, how it's become a hobby of mine and how I kind of justify uh, having it as a hobby. So it's something that I think about a lot. I follow a lot of people on Instagram that also have a pretty impressive boot collection, a shoe and boot collection. You know, so I know that there's other, there are others out there like me, like-minded individuals that grow to amass a large collection of boots. Obviously, this is not my entire boot collection, but this is just some of them that I thought I'd, I'd show for display purposes. Really, yeah, it has become a hobby of mine. What I think is interesting is when I, when I sort of compare other people's hobbies to mine, what I find is, you know, I do a lot of thinking about it, and what I've come to the conclusion is, is the reason why I justify having a boot collection over other things, like having a gun collection, or, or having a knife collection, or having a huge watch collection, or, or having a collection of cars. The reason why I choose boots is mainly because of the practicality and how easy it is to implement the boots into my lifestyle. If, if you compare boot collecting to gun collecting, okay, well, how realistically, how often do you go out and shoot your guns? Well, so, some people more than others, but I know for me, in my particular case, I've probably shot, in the last 10 years, I could count on one hand how many times I've been to the gun range. It, same with knives, you know, there, there are some guys out there with some really expensive knife collections and you know they get really into the technicalities of the different types of steel and where it was made and how it was made and you know how to sharpen certain blades and, and all this. When I think about knives I think wow I probably use a knife maybe four or five times a week. Usually that's just to open Amazon packages you know. So in terms of practicality for guns and knives that was never uh, my thing and then in addition to that Cars, okay, so cars are very expensive, especially when you start getting into the collector's stuff. And then, in addition to that, you know, how much time do you realistically spend in a car? For me, I probably spend about tops an hour a day in the car on a bad day, but most days it's probably closer to around 45 minutes tops. And then you compare that to boots, how many times, how many hours a day do I spend in my boots? Well, let me tell you what, I spend <laughs> a lot of time in my boots. Probably, probably on average about 15 hours a day I spend in boots. Now that's over half my life, if you think about it. There's 24 hours in a day, and if I'm spending more than 24 hours of, those, of that day in boots, well, wouldn't it make sense to invest in them then at that point, simply from a, from a standpoint of time alone. It just it just makes more sense to me that if I'm going to invest money into a into a collector's item, it might as well be something practical like a boot. It is more popular for guys to sort of sort of collect other things that, that are seemingly more manly, um, you know, weapons and things like that. Not to say that I don't believe that having those things is necessary, but I do think that, you know, because it happens to me all the time, people ask me, oh, why do you need so many boots? Why do you need so many pairs of boots? And, you know, they're asking me this, and yet they have uh, over 50, 50 collector's knives, or, or, you know, they have a room full of guns on display, you know, revolvers, pistols, AR-15s, M16s, you know, the works. They have a huge arsenal, they have a gun in their glove box, and in their <laughs> in their pocket and then you know in their drawer and in their glove compartment and in their you know, everywhere they have they have guns everywhere well how, how realistically and it's it's like it's like any hobby you can justify it if you enjoy it and you love it well then you can justify it and in my case the boot is just something i love it i love the way they look i love the experience of putting them on and taking them off and pairing them with different outfits. It's really a creative outlet for me every time I get to put on a pair of boots. It's it's a time, it's every day I have the opportunity to reinvent myself with putting on an outfit. You know, a lot, a lot of people might think, oh, well, appearances, that's just, that's superficial. I don't think it is. I don't think it is at all. I think it's, I appreciate every aspect of these boots and the feel and the leather and the workmanship that went behind it. 
I don't think there's anything shallow about that. It's not just about appearances for me. It's about it's about everything that, that these represent for me. So that's what I was thinking. That this week I'm going to actually compare my hobbies against the other hobbies that I mentioned, being gun collections, knife collections, and car collections. <laughs> I'm going to compare all those hobbies to boot collections. And at the end of this discussion, I'm going to give you the numbers, <laughs> for me anyways. Now, now realize, realize I do work in an office and I also, on my free time, I don't do anything that extreme. Normally my weekends consist of going to the mall, going out to eat, and if I'm feeling adventurous, I might even go to the movies. <laughs> That's my usual week. Work, mall, movies, stuff like that. Uh, pretty boring. So I'm not, I'm not really out there, I'm not roughing it, I'm not staring danger in the face every single day of my life. <laughs> so, so for me, this, this is the hobby that for me just makes the most sense, to be honest. I've had a lot of time to really think about this and to really reflect on it because sort of, you know, when I first got started, I was just sort of blindly just addicted to these. But then as I rationalized it in my head and really conceptualized what was happening, no, it made sense. And, and the other thing was, was I, recently I just read an article online. I looked for it again so I could reference it for this video, but I couldn't find it. But basically, um, it talked about what you'll actually need when Armageddon strikes or something like that. It was like, oh, you know, they were basically talking about how people, they think that by stockpiling ammunition in their basement, they're somehow going to ward off Armageddon single-handedly and, and survive Armageddon. Actually, you should consider these other 10 items that will, that will become crucial to your survival and well-being if crap hit the fan. And number like three on the list, number three from the top that they, they mentioned were boots. They said good foot, footwear will not only be uh, crucial to your survival and your health, <laughs> but also a very valuable trade item. You know, and I guess that makes a lot of sense. If I'm in a really bad situation, what's gonna be more valuable, a pound of gold or some footwear. It makes sense that a, you know, a good pair of solid boots it would be a very wise thing to have around. <laughs> and so I thought that was really interesting. And, and not that I'm a doomsday prepper or anything like that. That idea really captivated me. And actually it was that article that inspired me to, to, to do this video just because it's not a normal video for me, but it, it's, it's something that I feel like should be addressed just because I feel like it's the underlying reason why I do collect footwear is that it, it could be tied to like some instinctual uh, urge to to protect myself and by by collecting a lot of good footwear I'm in I'm in essence protecting my family <laughs> I know it sounds ridiculous but anyways as a hobbyist I think hobbyists their their underlying desire for collecting things is not just their fascination in it but it in some way could be tied ultimately to their survival and their longevity in a dire consequence. And so, so that's why knives make sense. That's why guns make sense. That's why, that's why stockpiling food and ammunition makes sense to certain people. I know this. I have a lot of friends that do this. That's why some of my friends, you know, they bury gold in their <laughs> backyard. I don't do that. Some people are into that. I'm not judging those people at all. I'm a nerd just like they are. It's just I, I project my nerd into this direction here. I wanted to do this video to talk about that because the more I think about it, the less insane boot collecting feels. <laughs> you know, some of my other buddies, I see them, they take a lot of scrutiny on, on social media from time to time because, you know, people will get on there and be like, oh, why do you, why do you have that big of a boot collection? Oh, uh, do you ever break your boots in? You know, uh, is that the other thing people always have something negative to say on the internet <laughs> over whatever random topic. But in this case, yeah, I, I do, I thought that that was, that I wanted to kind of add to that discussion because I don't think, I don't think boot collecting is all that weird. <laughs> At least in my brain it's not. Like I said, I have, I have friends that they collect, they collect the knives, they collect the guns. Some of them, they collect cars. You know, you don't spend that much time in the car. You don't live in your car. You don't, you don't live with your car. You spend all your whole day in your boots, your entire day. You, you shower, you throw on an outfit, you have boots on from the time you step out the door to the time you come home, and sometimes until you go to bed. They're on, your, on you all day long. And 
damn it, they might as well be comfortable and they might as well be enjoyable to look at, <laughs> right? I mean, so that's why this week I'm going to time my time with those four categories. The guns, which I can tell you already is going to be zero. <laughs> uh, knives, how, how many times I use a knife to, to cut random things, boxes, and then cars. Uh, cars will definitely be higher ranking, I, I guarantee that. But yeah, how much time I spend in my car. And then how much time I spend in my boots. And, and I'm going to tally it all up real nice and lay it all out. And then hopefully that metric will help you boot enthusiasts justify your addiction just a little bit more. <laughs> So getting on this topic, I have, and thinking about this recently, I have realized that there is sort of a, sh I do have a shortcoming when it comes to, when it comes to my gear. I, I, I don't have many, many good knives. I only have one car. <laughs> um, so I, I, I do realize that, that my boot collection is a bit heavy and my collection of other things is a bit light. So I have used this at time, not only to justify my boot collection, but to also realize that maybe I could work on some of these other areas. You know, maybe maybe my knife collection is a little weak. Maybe that needs to get, you know, amped up a little bit. Maybe my my collection of other things is a little weak. You know, maybe that needs to get amped up. Do some research and get some better gear in other areas. So, so this is sort of a two-pronged approach, not only to justify boots, but <laughs> to sort of maybe get a better understanding of what I'm lacking in as well, as a collector of things. So, and as a consumer. So anyways, I'll see you in a week when this is all wrapped up. Hey guys, how's it going? All right, well, it's been a week, and as promised, I'm going to read off the results of, you know, comparing the different hobbies. And I gotta say, it's been an interesting week. I've done a lot of uh, shopping on Amazon. <laughs> I've done a lot of reading of blogs online and did a lot of discovery and realized, yeah, th there's, there is definitely a gap in my collection of things. My, my boot collection is definitely a little heavy. Uh, that doesn't mean I'm selling any boots. Let's not get crazy here. I'll read off the, uh, the results. So they actually did surprise me a little bit. And again, this is very subjective. This is just, these are all my opinions. These aren't meant to, you know, I'm not trying to talk bad about anybody else's hobbies or anything like that. In fact, I admire other people's hobbies. So, so partly, part of this was to sort of question the direction that I take my hobbies in and maybe go, you know, delve into some of the other hobbies. So I compared guns, knives, cars, and boots. Collecting all of those and how much sense they would make to me. Well, this week I spent... <laughs> zero seconds shooting guns. So <laughs> so my gun collection does not need to grow at all. <laughs> so I think my gun collection is gonna kinda stay <laughs> stagnant at the moment. <laughs> Next up are knives, and I actually realized that yeah, I was severely lacking in the knife department. Uh, I use knives quite a bit more than I had originally thought off the top of my head. I used knives a lot this week. I had to cut down some trees in the yard, and in doing so I had to cut some ropes to, to tie, and that's where uh, some, some knives came into play for that. Uh, making dinner, uh, I spent at least 20, 30 minutes this week cutting vegetables <laughs> for dinner. I opened a lot of Amazon packages. Um, I've also found that a knife is a good conversation piece. You know, if, if I ran into a buddy of mine that I hadn't seen in a while, and we actually got to talking about knives, and that was, that was fun. You know, he doesn't want to hear about my boots, you know. <laughs> So, so having a knife, it, a knife is a good common sort of conversation piece that I think a lot of dudes can relate to. So I think from that perspective, it's a good thing to kind of know a little bit about the knife world, the knife collecting world, good knives. And from, from that respect, you know, we had a lot to talk about. So that was good. So not just using the knife, but also talking about it. Just like I talk about my boots on this blog, on this YouTube channel. That takes up time. YouTube and Instagram, they're my creative outlets. It's a space for me to get out of my head stuff that I don't want to unload on other people. Like my wife, my family, my friends, they don't want to hear about, they don't want to hear me talk about this stuff all the time. Well, I, I want to talk about this stuff. And this is, this is my outlet. And so thank you guys for, <laughs> for entertaining me <laughs> in this venture. So yeah, I also use knives to cut apples, uh, pears, uh, avocados. Um, I was using knives, I, ha I have patches in my clothes that I don't like. 
So guess what? I take the knife and I spent about an hour removing patches from my shirt from the inside of my shirts and, and jackets this week. I, I do that sometimes. I'll just I'll just take some of my clothes out of my closet and just cut cut patches out because they're, they're they don't weigh much but but cutting those out actually makes the garment feel much lighter it breathes easier so i use knives a lot so it, it actually makes sense for me to have a few good knives in my collection and so that's what i actually did i went ahead and i ordered a few knives on amazon i'll, I'll probably do a review on these later but yeah this is a uh, this is a spider co knife this is a this is a nice little knife um, it's got a nice belly here, <laughs> so that's that's a new purchase of mine. So I got another Spyderco knife. This one's a bit longer. It also has a good belly to it. So yeah, you can see. One's for this one's, you know, each one I guess would serve different purposes. One guy I read, he uses his Spyderco knife actually to cut vegetables with. He uses it, he keeps it in his pocket, and he just cuts everything with it, including he cooks with it too. I thought that was interesting. So so yeah, I've been I've been cutting up apples and oranges and avocados with that. Um, and then this one, this one I, I'll admit, this is gonna get a lot less, a lot less use. Um, this is the CRKT. This had awesome reviews and it's awesome. Don't get me wrong, this is called the M16. This is just, this is literally, <laughs> this is a commando's knife right here. It's got serrated, <laughs> it's got the serrated uh, blade here. It's razor sharp and not to mention, it's just intimidating looking. It, it, it even it even has a safety pin here, which is interesting. <laughs> it, you know, it, it, it's basically it's not gonna it's not gonna snap shut on you. So you have to use the safety pin to to close that up. Very very badass knife, but I'm probably not gonna be carrying that around with me many places. <laughs> in fact, I'm probably gonna store it in a, in a safe somewhere because it's <laughs> I don't want uh, I don't want anybody getting their hands on that. And then um yeah also from a from a from an everyday carry standpoint, I've been delving into the world of everyday carry a lot more lately, reading blogs about it and looking at websites. There's some really nice websites out there that feature a lot of good everyday carry uh, items. And, and one thing that people keep coming back to is uh, these, these little tactical flashlights, but they're very nice. They're, they're, uh, they're aluminum, very durable. They're supposed to be waterproof even. This one's called Hausbell, H-A-U-S-B-E-L-L. -L. This one's called Cree by McCaffin. But anyways, they're real bright. They're super bright. And they, they each just take one AA battery. But yeah, it was my brother actually who introduced me to these. And I did some research and I ordered a few on Amazon and they're really nice. They're really handy. I, I actually, I set these up all over the house just because there's times where where I need to go in the backyard, and I need some light. Well, guess what? I got a I got a little flashlight sitting right there. It takes one AA battery. Really convenient. It's just really nice. It's ergonomic. It's beautiful. I love to hold it. I threw one in my car too, just because you never know. I mean, it's good to be prepared. In, in addition to not only justifying a boot collection, I'm also exploring. Like I said, areas where I'm weak, where I should probably put focus more of my energy, and I think. Having light sources everywhere is, is definitely a solid idea, you know, just all over the house. Have them in your house, have them in your car, yeah, it, it really helps. You know, when it's dark and I don't, you know, I need to get my keys out, well, I can find my key real easy now, you know. Yeah, there's a, there's a light in my iPhone, but the iPhone, it's not always the most convenient light, it's not always, it's not the brightest light. These are way brighter than the iPhone lights. So yeah, a good tactical flashlight, and not to mention, I bet you could, you know, break a car window with that. You know, if in a pinch, you could probably use that to smash a window open. So yeah, good stuff, good stuff. This, uh, this is called a catch-all tray. I got this to use as the focal piece of my everyday carry photography. Um, I'm, I plan to do on my Instagram, I do a lot of, a lot of style pictures, but I think, I think I'm gonna start incorporating this and doing an everyday carry gear, hashtag EDC gear and start showing off what I carry every day. And I'm gonna throw it in there. This is, again, from P Pigeon Tree Crafting. This is an indigo dipped, uh, natural vegetable tanned leather uh, catch-all tray. It's just gorgeous. It looks stunning on my, on my nightstand. And guess what? I'm gonna be, be putting my stuff in there and 
This is where my stuff is just gonna sit and it's gonna look look awesome doing it. <laughs> so so back on track. So yeah, so I talked about the knives and how I really had to check my knife my knife game. And so yeah, I got I got these got these few knives on Amazon. Might get some more. Might might get one or two more. But for now, I feel like I, I have I have that these bases pretty well rounded. I mean, they all pretty much do the same thing. So. You know, they, they will serve slightly different purposes. If I'm going camping, let's face it, I'm bringing this thing. <laughs> but on my day to day, the, these other ones are definitely gonna be more than sufficient, so. Anyways, when it came to being in my car, I actually spent more time in my car than I thought. I spent eight and a half hours driving this week. That includes all the errands I needed to do, to and from work, Eight and a half hours in the car. So yeah, I, I rely on my car very heavily. I'm not downplaying people who like cars. I'm not, I'm not criticizing that hobby at all. Especially if you drive more than I do, then by all means, have, have two cars, have three cars. But if you can afford it and you love cars and you love studying about the engines and how they're built and how they're made, and if you're into that, if you're into modifying your car and stuff, then that's, that's a great hobby. For me, I'm gonna stick with my my basic sedan, <laughs> that's all I need for now. My hours in boots, this, this, is, this is more than I thought, 98 and a half hours in boots. That's a high percentage, that's a lot of hours. That's like double, more than double a work week in boots. I spent, spend a lot of time in my boots, which again is why I, it's just so practical for me. For my subjective opinion, having a lot of nice boots is really convenient. I have every time it's cold, every time it's slippery out, every time it's raining, every time it's snowing, when it's warm, I have options. If I'm gonna wear lightweight chinos, if I'm gonna wear a heavyweight wool, if I'm gonna wear a tweed, I have a lot of options of really good sturdy footwear to work around the elements outside. So for me, not only from you know just a style standpoint, but from a survivalist standpoint, in a collector's standpoint, I think I have a really well-rounded boot collection. And it's something I use literally every single day without fail. It's something that I put on every single day and I wear for the majority of the day. I wear them in the house. I don't take them off when I come home. I, I leave them on because I don't know if I'm gonna need to walk outside or go get the mail or walk the dog. Or, you know, There's all kinds of things that could come up. I might have to leave and go to the grocery store and I don't wanna bend down and have to put on my boots again. So that's why having a lot of boots and keeping them on all day makes sense for me. And, and they're very comfortable. They're actually more comfortable than for me walking around without them on. So <laughs> I prefer to have them on. For me, that's why having a large boot collection definitely, definitely makes sense for my lifestyle. If you're a cop, it makes sense to have a lot of guns. It makes sense to study guns, to know guns. That would make sense. For me, that's not, that's not necessary for me. A few extra knives was necessary. I was definitely lacking in that department. And, and having a few good everyday carry knives was definitely something I needed to check for myself. Studying everyday carry stuff, having the, some tactical flashlights. Again, I, I, have, I have some more. You can get packs of these and they're really cheap. I, I got a five pack of these. They're just like $15. <laughs> Three bucks for one of these. Oh my God. You can't spend $3 and get anything nearly as nice as that. Three dollars won't even buy you a Snickers bar anymore, much less a, a ultra durable flashlight. Um, and I do have more uh, more gear on the way, more EDC gear uh, that I will do reviews on and feature on both my Instagram and my YouTube channel. But yeah, I, did, I just I really wanted to do this to sort of talk about my hobby and how I how I like to do a lot of self reflection and reflect on what I do, what I've done, and where I could go from here. It's always good to check yourself. You know, I know a, a lot of guys, they have a lot of, they have a huge gun collection, but they wouldn't fathom buying a pair of Aldens. That's like, what, you know, crazy to them. But, you know, if you think about it, it it's really kind of the same discipline that you approach guns, that you would approach footwear, that you would approach knives, that you would approach things like that. Having, having a functionality in mind for situations that could arise, you know, it, it's, it's the same thing. Well, for boots, for me, Having a lot of boots just has made sense. So, anyways, um, I hope this review makes sense to <laughs> made sense to you guys, and um, I'm really looking forward to getting my new gear and and, and showing that off. Cause cause just like I love the workmanship of boots, I'm telling you some of this new stuff that I 
that I'm waiting for in the mail is just gorgeous. When I saw it, I was like, oh my God. Just like I was, you know, lusting after Allinans and Vibergs and Trumans and Grant Stones. Same thing happened when I saw some of this EDC gear. There are some seriously talented artists out there making some seriously nice gear. So I just wanted to sort of use this review as maybe a segue into that. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. <laughs> um, I hope it made sense to you again. And uh, I am on Instagram. You can follow me there. And I hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you next time.